Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The title of this sermon is A Meditation on Fair Wages. Day laborers are among the most economically insecure people anywhere. Throughout the ages, towns and cities have had designated locations where employers could find day laborers. I have vivid memories of such a place in my hometown where men assembled at the break of dawn to await the arrival of a truck in search for day laborers. The potential laborers would arrive early with the hope of being among the first chosen so as to work for the most hours. In my hometown, the men were overwhelmingly black, semi-literate, functional al alcoholics, heavy smokers who spoke with an abundance of colorful obscenities. When I was 16, the cost of manual labor was 60 cents an hour. And, and I stood in that line a few times. The employer would look the men over and select those he thought most suitable for the work he needed to have done. Big strong men for hard work, like digging ditches, carrying heavy loads, laying rail tracks, etc. Smaller men were chosen for easier jobs, like picking berries or apples, mowing lawns, shoveling sand on and off trucks, helping carpenters, and the like. I was usually among the smaller men. The easier jobs often paid less. Sometimes those jobs lasted for only a few hours. And at the end of the day, one's travel to and fro, the site of the work was usually subtracted from one's total wages. I could not imagine how the men with families were able to support them on such meager earnings. Now, like many of Jesus' teachings, the biblical passage that was read this morning also surprises us. It likens the kingdom of heaven to a landowner who went out in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. There is no discussion of how the man came to own the land, which in the case of most landowners can raise many moral questions, both then and now. Suffice it to say that the reader is expected to assume that he had come into ownership in an honest way. Accordingly, he agreed to pay the laborers one denarius for the day's work, which in those days, a day's work meant 12 hours. And it appears that a denarius was worth about 15 cents in our money, hence about a penny an hour. A little later in the morning, the owners hired another group and agreed to pay them fairly. And later still in the day, he hired some others similarly. And an hour before sundown, he saw still others standing in the marketplace. And when he asked them why they were not working, they said, because no one has hired them. And he then hired them at the end of the day. Soon thereafter, the owner told his foreman to pay the men their wages, beginning with the last ones first, who had been hired. Accordingly, the foreman paid them one denarius, and he did the same for each of the others. 
And when those who had worked all day in the hot blazing sun came forward, they expected to be paid more than they had contracted for because they had worked so much longer than the last who were hired. Instead, they were also paid one denarius, which angered them because it seemed unfair that those who had worked only one hour should be paid the same as the ones who had worked 12 hours in the hot blazing sun. And the owner then said that since he had paid them according to the contract they had made with him, they were not being cheated and they should not feel that they were. And they then said to him, but those who were hired last and had worked for only one hour were paid the same as you paid us. You thereby made them equal to us. And the owner then reminded them that he had not treated them unfairly because he had honored the contract they had made with him. And further he said, do I not have the right to do what I please with my own money? Or are you envious because of my generosity? And that final statement seems to have hit its mark, since the purpose of the story was to draw an analogy with the kingdom of heaven by illustrating God's generosity in treating all of them equally, regardless of the length of time they had been working. And thus those who had arrived late would be treated the same as those who had arrived early. The analogy is not with the work that was undertaken, but with the reward that was received. Had the men come to a festive event, a party, at different times, no one would have had any trouble with them all being treated equally. But the story does not depict a festive event, but rather one of hard labor. What would possibly justify all of them being treated paid equally? One could argue that regardless of the time they spent working, the needs of all the workers were the same. It was not their fault that some were chosen last while others were chosen first. Clearly men who waited all day to be chosen also had families to support. Why should they suffer because no one had hired them earlier in the day? In other words, Rather than measure fair pay by the amount of labor performed, a generous person might measure it instead by the needs of each of them. Might not the needs of those who had been hired last be the same as those who had been hired earlier? Would that not justify the act of paying them all the same? Obviously, we are speculating about the owner's motivation for his generous action. For certain, the story does not necessarily challenge the obvious question pertaining to equal pay for equal work, since this action is obviously equal pay for unequal work. In our day, we ourselves have seen the injustice of women, newly arrived immigrants, and racial minorities being paid less than white men for the same work. And we have rightly repudiated all such arbitrary discrimination. But after meeting the need, the demands of each contract, if an employer wants to be generous with his own money, none would deny him the right to do so, despite 
the feelings of the other workers who may indeed become envious of the employer's action, which means to turn an evil eye towards the employer because of his goodness. Certainly the men who worked for only one hour had no basis on which to demand equal pay with those who had worked all day. They would certainly have been surprised. But the purpose of the story was to illustrate the character of the generous employer, who in this story represents God, awarding people not in accordance with their input, but in accordance with God's generosity, even if that generous spirit seems to be expressed only towards those who were hired last, rather than those who had worked all day long. Why do you suppose Jesus chose to demonstrate God's generosity only to those who labored for one hour and not to those who had labored the entire day? Might it be that those who came into the kingdom of God late should receive the same benefits as those who would arrive much earlier? Are there similarities between this story and that of the so-called prodigal son, which is the closest parallel to it in the Bible? Is not God's grace independent of every other consideration? Is not God's grace based on God's generosity alone? And if that is true, then is it ever appropriate to speak about God's action as being fair, since it is not based on, nor does it contradict any rational criterion designed by humans? Clearly, the ethics of the kingdom of heaven differs radically from the ethics of our society. And now, please share your thoughts on this matter of fair wages from a Christian point of view. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. Are there things stirring up in you now that have come to life in this message? I gotta tell you, this was this is always a, a difficult scripture for me because I have a sense of this is unfair. <laughs> and so to think about it not in terms of fairness, but in terms of generosity is you just expanded my understanding in a way of I haven't seen it before. So thank you. We have, I think, Julia and then Judy. Also, uh, my, uh, my ex employer was very much like, she gave me, she would give me money, like, it just was good. I hope I find an employer as good as her. I have to say a prayer for Damien and thanks, Lord. That's how I got my other guitar and my other guitar repaired. And it was just, it went when it went, but it, she was the greatest employer I've ever had. She mm -hmm. just, she gave me fair wage, even though I uh, worked only an hour, she gave me 30 bucks. And I was like, are you sure you do the only give me $7, $7, $7.50 was my wage on the table. She said, no, take it. I said, oh, wow. And that was a couple of times. She even, she even gave me $200 to, uh, when she when she said she didn't need me anymore and I bought clothes with it so I have clothes for the summertime now thank God because I didn't have any clothes for the summertime so I'll just thank God for that for that gift that she gave me and um I hope I, I hope I have another employer that's that good <laughs> thanks thank you Julia Judy uh, am I unmuted? Can yeah. you hear me? Okay. Uh, I was just thinking about the, the 
people who are trying to come into our country, uh, talking about the first and the last, and thinking about over the years, how many people have come and have been welcomed into our country with, with uh, welcome into churches and families and homes that have taken care of them and helped them. And now, right now, we have all these people at our borders that can't come in and aren't wanted and they are the least now. And, and they were just as much in need as the people who came in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago. Their, the conditions and their needs haven't changed, but we've changed in the way we receive them. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, Jody. Adrian. Yeah, Brent, when I remember when I heard this passage as a younger, I mean like, you know, 10, 12 years old, I just could not for the life of me figure it out. I just said, this isn't right. And I did not, I just didn't understand it. And when Peter had asked me to read this passage and I, you know, read it through, I said, oh, you know, I hadn't really focused on it. And, and as Peter mentioned, I saw it in terms of the prodigal son and also Joseph returning home. And I feel like it should be one of those passages that starts out, the kingdom of God is like, you know, and then the landowner. And, um, and I thought about it in terms of most of us, how we treat, it's sort of like what Judy said about the immigrants, but with our own families, we try to be equal in terms of how we treat our children and our grandchildren. And we love them all, but we all know there may be some that we love just a little bit more. But, you know, we treat them equally. So I just, I just was so, so happy to hear what Peter had to say because I feel it's just important that we realize how much love God has for us and we think about the way we deal with the things that he has given us, that there is still room for us to um, realize that some, we need to change some of the things that we do. Uh, Tara, it looks like you're... Um, thank you so much, Peter. I. Adrian, I too, for many years, just read that and was like, oh. Um, and I think what it says to me is that we have this idea of what just, what's just, what's right, what's wrong. And God wants to shake that up. You know, mm-hmm. Jesus came to turn things upside down. And maybe it's not important as much to think about what's just or what's right and what's not right, but that, you know, God's grace and love is so abundant um, that we need to be grateful no matter where we are in line, (laughs) you know, because I think one denarius of God's grace and love would be more to last, you know, eternity. So um, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Terrell. Heather. Julia, I'm just thinking about what you said, and I'm thinking about how much you appreciated that employer and what a memory sticks with you. And I'm thinking about those 11th hour workers and how much they appreciated what they got for, and and probably recognized. And maybe that was something for them that, you know, uh, I mean, you know, you could look at a lot of different ways, but maybe that was something that stuck with them and helped them move forward. Um, but that was a very generous employer, Julia. Mm. 
thank you everyone for your reflections and uh, 